Because our family came to Orange County in the mid-1800s, around the 1840s. And at that time, our last name was spelled C-L-O-U-G-H. We've gone down to Goochland and found the records in the courthouse there. And when they came here, it got spelled C-L-U-F-F, and that's the way it's been ever since. And we like to joke we were running from the law, so that was the reason for the name change. But no, we've, um, my children who live with me here in the town of Orange are sixth generation in the county just from the Clough name. And uh, as you stated, I was born here, actually born in Culpeper, but that's where mom worked at the time, and raised actually in the county at the time, where my parents live has now since been annexed and is in town, but at the time I grew up, it was in the county, but we were right on the edge of town. So I've always considered Orange my hometown and um, lived here for almost my entire life. A few years at school and seven years in Georgia, but boomeranged back home and uh, couldn't really call any other place home. You know, uh, it's, it's heartening to hear a story where someone leaves town and goes and uh, finds their way in the world a little bit, but then comes back. Not everybody does that. True, I would say most of my friends from school did not, certainly more than 50%. There's still a great number that do live in the area. But um, I'd say that the reason for that happening for me personally was twofold, I knew the area. And when you grow up in an area where you know everyone and you know the area, when things come up, you just know who to go to or you know who to ask. And the other thing was, my parents were getting older. And I had, we had just had our first daughter. And it was probably getting to be pretty evident that they weren't going to be able to travel down to Georgia as easily. So, and an opportunity came up at the University of Virginia. So we just packed the car and the truck and came home. There was a lot of pull. When, you, when your roots are deep, it's hard to pull them up and have, not have them reroot or pull you back. And um, I think I was also a product of growing up where my grandfather was very adamant about having a tight local family. Thus, the reason he began his business and why all three sons worked with him. C. Cosby Clough Incorporated started in 1927 by my grandfather, C. Cosby Clough and started out as a heating business and then later expanded as the boys came along into, and the technology caught up into air conditioning, roofing, and plumbing. Mm -hmm. And uh, stayed in business until 2001 for 75 years. Well, what did you do at the University of Virginia? At the University of Virginia, I did what I have been doing since I graduated university, and that is working in the field of video production, whether it be news, which I did for seven years in Charlottesville, Richmond, and Atlanta, or corporate video, which I did in Augusta, Georgia, for, I want to say, seven years there at Morris Communications, and then finally at the University of Virginia for 16 years. I worked in video production there. We did uh, everything you can imagine. From when I first started, I was producing the 30-minute Cavalier Sports Weekly program, which aired on local cable and on television. And then as the department's responsibilities grew and changed, moved into student features, live event production. Of course, that's been the main focus here recently with the advent and launch of the ACC network on ESPN. And so there's been a lot of live event production and features were my most, the things I did most frequently in the last few years. I also have to mention that for seven or eight years of that time, right in the middle, I was a specific sport producer. So I produced the live production for the in-venue boards, the video boards in the venues, and did that for both men's soccer and baseball. 
which got me lots of trips to the postseason, lots of weekends working, and lots of trips to national championships. Wow. But they were fun and, and interesting experiences, and uh, certainly wouldn't trade them. And I heard you won a big award for this. Well, I was nominated for an Emmy for a piece I did and submitted back in my first several years. It was a piece about a men's soccer player who suffered a grievous injury on the field, an almost 90 degree hyper extension of his knee. And we decided at that, I almost decided immediately to follow him through his entire rehab journey. Since we had such quote unquote good footage of the accident, of the incident, and then went through him with his surgery, through his rehab, and then ultimately to almost to the day a year later coming back onto the field to play again. So that was a very big honor to be nominated for an Emmy. Let's go back to your childhood here in, in, in the town of Orange. And uh, uh, Can you uh, remember some funny stories or fond memories, uh, maybe some not so fond memories from that time? I can remember quite a few. It's just a matter of filtering which ones I should tell. <laughs> Certainly in the time I grew up, which the prime of my childhood would have been the late 60s through the early 80s. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, in that time, Orange was very bustling. I don't remember many, if any, storefronts that didn't have something in them. And uh, something to do somewhere you know the the little leagues and youth sports at that time were very active i was very fortunate to grow up in a neighborhood where there are about four of us boys maybe five all within two years age of each other and we just got into every type of tom sawyer huck finn type of adventure we could imagine you know we were right next to the rapidan river and a lot of fields and a lot of woods and and we did a lot of boy things that were very formative and probably some things we shouldn't have done that were also very formative. But um, any specific instances, um, I think some of the fondest memories I have is just playing pickup baseball in the field behind the Joneses and Jaderborg's house mm -hmm. or playing tackle football outside Jimmy in Jimmy Colvin's yard, right outside their carport. No pads. No, no, absolutely not. No pads. No, nothing ever came of that except for Bunky Jones's, the old postmaster's son Taylor, got a collar, broken collarbone one time. I do recall that. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, but it was, they're very fond memories, and most of those guys still live in the area. We definitely keep in touch, see each other from time to time, and. Uh, and some other memories of the, you know, it was a rural county, so that's why we did those things, because th there weren't a lot of other distractions other than the sports and, and the things we could just make up, whether it would be taking firecrackers out and having army man battles mm -hmm. <laughs> under a tree and running around always barefoot in the summer. By the end of the summer, your calluses were a quarter inch thick on the bottom of your feet. But... um yeah, it was what you might call the idyllic childhood. Wow. There was a, there was a very active um, Cub Scout troop at that time, Pac-14, led by Bud Kidwell, and there were just there were probably a hundred kids or more that were involved in that. And there was also a very active um, Brownie and Girl Scout group at the time as well. But we certainly had activities that we did through them and. And uh, very fortunate to grow up in a church that had a very active youth program and also very musically inclined. We had a wonderful uh, band teacher in high school, Gary Hoffman, who led the Orange High School Band to heights it had never imagined possible. So there was just, yeah, the idyllic childhood. Wow. When I was about Late 16, early 17 years old, I was approached by my uncle, Clivy Clough, and one of the employees at my grandfather's business, Walker Carpenter. 
both of whom were members of the Orange Volunteer Fire Company. And they said, well, you ought to come on down the road and join up with the company. Well, that kind of struck a nerve because as a young boy, growing up as I did, one of my favorite shows on TV was Emergency 51, <laughs> which was the L.A. Fire Department. But, you know, I just was one of those kids that had the dream of growing up to be a fireman, which was very common in that era. But all of a sudden, the opportunity to fulfill that was laid out in front of me. And of course, Walker had been chief for many years. Clevy was one of, had been a line officer and then became a uh, business officer for, for a number of decades. So I looked into it. They had a junior company at the time. It was quite active. And I thought, sure, why not give it a try? And this is when the uh, fire station was up on Main Street. When the fire whistle blew every time there was a call, interrupted every church service on Sunday morning, and <laughs> or any concert, any court, and, and uh, yeah, but it was has been almost a mirror image of seeing the changes in orange from my childhood to now, to seeing the changes within the fire company from then, from that time, my teen years until now. It's kind of an interesting parallel, but it, uh, it has been just a wonderful organization. It is certainly, I'm biased in this opinion, but I feel it's absolutely one of the best volu full volunteer stations in the state and provides an extremely high level of quality emergency services to the citizens, both in town and in our first due area. And uh, we just maintain a high level of training. We have first-rate equipment. And uh, it's certainly one of the things I'm most proud of, not just individually, but as a group, is being part of that team. Today's Orange, how do you see it? And, and how do, do, is it different from it was when you were a, a child? In many ways, it is still the same. But in many ways, it has changed. Uh, you know, I don't want to shape this in a negative light, but it almost seems as though Orange struggles with being something for the present while holding on to its past. Not a bad struggle. That's just my interpretation of it. This is a very historical area, as we all know, that, that grew up here. Um, we get all that by osmosis, <laughs> not only being taught it, but how does Orange maintain that historical character and structure yet still move into the 21st century? And the town itself, if that's what we're speaking about, has as many people, if not more, than it did then. But I think it's more of a, a bedroom community now than it was then. There's certainly more people working outside of town than work in town. I'm one of the fortunate right now. I actually get to work in town. I own a business here that my grandfather started and and I'm able to operate that. But um, I think Orange will definitely move ahead and progress. It certainly is. We see it in the eastern end of Orange County. Uh, there's really nothing you can do to stop that. But I think and I hope and it seems to me that we're trying to move forward in the way that's best able to preserve that historical aspect, yet embrace the future and whatever it may hold. Do you have a vision for the next 50 years, 100 years? A vision. <laughs> hmm. Just my personal vision, what I would like to see. Mm -hmm. I think I'd like to see exactly what I just said, and that is I'd like to see, Orange is known for its rural nature, and I think that's one of its great selling points, and certainly something that I value as I look back at my childhood and, and growing up, and I'd hate to see it lose that character entirely, but at the same time, I like seeing the growth and 
kind of a return a little bit to that bustling nature that Orange had in the 60s and 70s. Um, 50 years down the road, I think it's going to look very different. But at the same time, I think there's going to be things that we'll very easily recognize for those of us that grew up in the mid to late 20th century. I think we'll be able to recognize a few more of them in the western end of the county as opposed to the eastern end. Mm -hmm. But in town, I mean, I, I certainly would expect the courthouse to still be there as a one of the historical anchors. And I, I think we're realizing what our historical portions of the town are that are worth preserving to tell the story of Orange up through that point. Uh, wow, 100 years down the road, who can even tell? Look at the advancements that were made just in the 20th century and only uh, almost a quarter of the way into the next, how far we've gone. Mm. So, I mean, the sky's the limit. Mm.